This session will cover recording using Zoom. Before we start, we're going to go over a couple key points about recording. First is to just look for guidance from your school leadership around the do's and don'ts about recording sessions. Cloud recordings are automatically deleted after seven days in your Zoom account. Cloud recordings can only be shared with authenticated users, which means someone has to sign into their Zoom account with their City Schools account uh, in order to view that recording online. Capture your content lesson only. No sensitive interactions with students like SEL activities, for example. There are three main methods for capturing. The first preferred method is to capture a lesson without students even present. Second preferred is to capture that lesson with students present but no interactions with those students. So all students' audio and video is off, no chatting being recorded. Then the third option is to capture a lesson with student interactions. Mute audio and video for all opt-out students. So you have to make sure that you know that list, which is available in Infinite Campus, and that you have uh, manually made sure that every one of those students has been muted, both of their audio and video. All right, let's go into a Zoom. So I have a Zoom meeting going on right now. I am the teacher as the host, and I have one student attending right now. Um, and for the purposes of this meeting, I'm not sharing any audio or video, but we're just gonna go over the recording piece. So when I go ahead and down here, at the bottom of the menu is the record option. If I was to hit the share screen button, the menu then becomes in the, or goes away, and is found in the more options. But right here, I have the ability to record. So when I select record, I'm going to get a message. Record this meeting, confirm if you want to record the meeting by selecting continue. So my participants don't see anything yet until I actually click continue. This meeting is being recorded. That message just got broadcast to everybody in the session. So if I pull up the student view, so this student joined my session from the web and they are gonna see this screen that this meeting is being recorded click continue to proceed to the meeting. If you do not want your audio and video recorded, please turn off your camera and microphone. So then the student then clicks continue or could even leave the meeting. And this is really any participant would have this experience. So they click continue, they stay in the meeting. Uh, this student has not joined their audio yet, but had they joined it by the computer, they would allow their computer. It lets you know that the meeting's being recorded and still the student has to uh, deliberately unmute in their video and audio. As the teacher, you decide in your security settings if you want students to be able to unmute themselves. This should be turned off if you don't want to have any student interactions. So if I turn that off and turn off chat, students would not be able to, if I go back to a student screen, I'm not allowed, allowed to do that. However, I could click on this start video button. So if I click that, it's gonna ask me to allow and then it would turn on my video. As a host, I can go find that student, see in the list that who's got their video on with the icons, and then I can use the more menu to stop their video. When you do that, that student is no longer able to start their video again. So when I, my video has been stopped as the student, if I click start, I can't start it because my teacher stopped it. So that's gonna be the case for all your students as long as you manually make that selection for each student that you wanna ensure that their video is off. And remember, that's only gonna be an option if they have their video on. If you stopped recording at the end of the lesson and you wanna do some interactions with your students, you could ask your students to unmute one at a time or um, as a group down here at the bottom under more, I can ask everyone to unmute. If you wanted to allow for the video again, you would have to find them one at a time and ask them to start. You can never turn on a student's audio and you can never turn on a student's video. You can only ask them to do those things. You have your uh, recording options at the bottom where you could pause the recording. Everybody knows that. They heard that the recording is stopped. And you could do another interaction with students. And then when you're going back to uh, instructing or sharing some content, you could start recording again. So you can toggle on and off that pausing and starting or the resume button. Once you're finished, you can simply click the stop button 
it'll let you know that you're going to get an email when the cloud recording is ready. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my recording altogether. Let's go take a look at what it looks like to retrieve your recording. So let's go back to the web. And in your recordings menu on your Zoom website, so again, this is up in the web site, zoom.us, you have a list of all your recordings. Uh, here's a good example of a recording I did where you can see that there are four files for this recording um, and that uh, at the top you have your range so you can do some searching and filtering of all the meetings that you've recorded. Uh, all the way on the right hand side are your share options where you can share this recording that is locked by the admin, so which means that only authenticated users can access this content. No guests could see it online. You could add expir expiry date to the link. Uh, by default, this video is going to delete after seven days. Uh, you do not want to allow your students to download this. Uh, On-demand registration required if you wanted them to be able to view that content. You could even pass code protect it and then the detailed information. If you want, you can have that information shown. And here's the option to copy the sharing information to your clipboard and possibly post it to your Google Classroom. The more option just gives you two options, download every file that you created or delete this entire recording. The deleted files would go to your trash can. When you click into the recording, so Zoom Train the Trainer session I recorded, uh, note that this one had four files, if you remember on the previous screen, uh, the main video recordings. I did a shared screen with the speaker view option, and I selected audio transcript. This is an interesting feature where you can select the system to automatically capture what's being said. If I open that file, it will come down as a download and then you can pull it up and see all the people that joined or this is the speaking parts these aren't chats the videos can be reviewed online so these aren't download links they just open it up in the web viewer and you can review the recording and you guys all have there you go and this is where you'll see the audio transcript on the right hand side There are settings in your settings uh, menu specifically for recording. So if I navigate to the recording options, you will notice that several of these options are locked by your admin. You cannot save locally to your computer. And then there are specific ones that you can call out for your recordings. I like the record active speaker with the shared screen and the save chat messages is a nice one. And then I also selected that audio transcripts if you need to capture what's being said. There are some additional ones that are all locked by the admins. You do not have to require a passcode currently. And again, these are all the items that are all locked. And that's going to conclude our segment on the recording a Zoom session.